It's November 13th, and I'm standing in front of the embassy to Myanmar in Tokyo. And I am here because I just picked up our visas. So last week I came and, um, well, we decided we were gonna come go to Myanmar. I'm not sure, I guess we just are going because like there's a few countries left in Southeast Asia we haven't been to. And it is one of the few. And it was the cheapest. And we were thinking of the Philippines as well. And then between the time that we decided and now the Philippines was hit by that huge typhoon. So we're really glad that we didn't choose the Philippines because it's probably a mess right now. And they have better things to deal with than tourists. So anyway, we chose Myanmar. And um, kind of because it's the most adventurous, kind of because the plane tickets were the cheapest, and kind of because we don't know a whole lot about it. I mean, we know like the rough outline, but we don't know a lot. So anyways, so I went down to Myanmar last week and oh, the other option was Vietnam. <laughs> but their, their website is terrible. Like the embassy website is so bad. I couldn't figure out what it cost for a, for a visa. I couldn't figure out anything. And it's not because it was like in Japanese. It was because it was in English kind of, and I had a bunch of dead links. So I was just like, okay, the Myanmar website was uh, really ugly and really like this plain text, like no CSS, but it functioned. <laughs> so um, we are, so last week I came down here and Despite the Myanmar website functioning, it misses a lot of information. So the first time I came down, it's like about an hour from where we live to come to this embassy. So the first time I came down, they didn't have like, <laughs> I didn't have all the right stuff. Like I had everything the website told me to have, like the application form and the picture and all that stuff. But I had to have like proof of employment and stuff and it wasn't like listed like on their site. It's nowhere there. I've went, gone back and looked again. So very nice lady at the embassy. And it wasn't a big deal because like, <laughs> There was like three people in line with me. Like I guess a lot of people aren't going there. Um, a very nice lady there was like, hey, this is what you need. Her English is super good. She explained everything. I got it all prepared, came back the next day, turned in the visa application, waited the five days, which turns us to today, and got the app, got the, picked up the visas and our passports and everything. So totally chill. Everything went really well. So the thing about Myanmar though, is it's like kind of been in like a state of civil war for a long time and we want to rent a motorbike and like explore the country on a motorbike but like there's areas that like you can't go like this there's a, there's a dude that lives there that's a, a westerner i think he might be american and his wife is from there and he rents motorbikes to basically foreigners who come there so i've been looking at his website to get this advice and he's got this map that's like the red area where the rebel fighting might be taking place where you're not allowed to go and the green area where it's okay and the yellow area where you have to pay for like an extra pass or something you have to pay for a permit to go it's like 200 us dollars so uh i'm not sure if we're gonna do that yet but we'll, we'll look into it anyway so that's what we're up to with going to Myanmar, and we are hoping to go like right around Christmas time and stay there for maybe a week or two, two and a half. I don't know, we're gonna decide that tonight. Exciting. Good morning. Good morning. It's we're, Christmas Eve. Yes, and we're at the train station. We just pedaled from the house and it is freezing. Like literally 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Sorry. degrees Celsius. And uh, we're going to Myanmar and I don't think it's warm or cold there, so like we're not bringing heavy coats, right? But it's cold in Tokyo, so right now Katie is stuffed full of like what are you wearing? I'm wearing one, two, three, four, four jackets and a shirt. What are you gonna do with those jackets? I'm gonna throw them in the trash. <laughs> oh, it, Andrew, if you're watching this, I'm I'm sorry, but I loved this while I was wearing it, but I haven't worn it in a while. It's kind of out of style now, so. It's gonna meet its demise now, but thank you. I've really enjoyed having this sweater. <laughs> and I'm wearing just this thing, like a fleece thing and a t-shirt. And then I'm doing something really like, this is against the rules. That's not against the rules. I've got that's, socks, that's, like, socks with my rules. sandals. <laughs> it, it's against the Katie rules, yeah. I didn't know that until now, so, but I think you should probably go stand at that door. So we're just gonna head to the airport now. <laughs> <laughs> Katie has managed to get butter in her hair. 
How did this happen? I don't know. <laughs> they gave me the food and the food just went wherever the food went. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a zoom in on this butter. Is it butter or cream cheese? I don't know if it's butter or cream cheese. Is it white or yellow? It's kind of hard to tell in your hair. Hold on. You tell me, what do you think? It's definitely cream cheese. Uh, okay, my bad. It's only cream cheese. Katie! <laughs> Is it really in there? <laughs> Why you got it all out? Myanmar? 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 It's not Myanmar. Yeah, Myanmar? Myanmar? <laughs> Um, so we've gotten to the airport here, and we've gone through immigration and customs. And we're still trying to figure out how to say the name of the country we're in. And yes, that's true. We learned that it's two syllables or three syllables. We usually say it three syllables, me and ma. But I think that's wrong. But we think it's wrong now, and it's supposed to be two syllables, Myanmar. So we don't know. <laughs> We did not research how many syllables the country had before we came. We could just call it Burma, but and then I think that like offends some people. So we went to the ATM, which was quite nerve wracking. And we had read online and in guidebooks that the ATMs here don't take international cards. So we were really worried about that. But we did also read that some of them do take international like very cards. Very recently. Yeah. Like, like within the last year or so that that's changed. So it was kind of like a 50-50 shot on whether the ATMs were going to work. And I wanted to shoot a video, but it was kind of awkward because there's another tourist and their bag was in front of the stuff and it, it was just awkward. So we didn't get to shoot a video at the ATM with the like celebratory awesome that shit worked. Because <laughs> that's always like, we go to countries and we have to go through like five ATMs before they spit out money, which might have been explained in the Taiwan video, but. This one was like the first ATM and it was no flow problem. Yes. So it's pretty good. Um, the money, do you have the money? The money, so we have this wad, right? Like this, it looks like a tremendous amount. The like size it looks of like we're rolling pinky. fat, right? Like it's not better <laughs> with my millions, you know? But this is only 300 USD basically. Yeah. Because each one of these pieces of paper is $5 and that's how it printed it out. So I wonder, is that the largest bill they have? here is about five US dollars. Everything's I, done in five dollar bills. I have no idea. Like You want... What comes smaller? We have no idea. You want a toy? Five dollars. You want chicken? Five dollars. <laughs> you want to eat a meal? Five dollars. I mean, this would be good in some cases, but bad in other cases. Like, you want you a want hotel a, room? Five dollars. That's good, but like you want a bottle of water? Five dollars. That's a bummer. <laughs> okay, it, enough so about the, the money, five dollars. Pretty cool. It has, has an elephant on it. That's pretty nice. Yeah. And then the backside has got some sort of building that maybe that's a government building or maybe that's a, I don't know. And I think they're called cats. Yeah, cat. Cats? Cat, are we saying that right? I don't know. And then also if you look up, I don't know if you can see, look through the camera. Maybe have to go, oh, okay. Can you see the elephant? Yes, I can see the elephant. Yeah, so you can see an elephant through the thing. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So that's pretty nice looking. Yeah, it's vibrant it's and purple. Nice looking bills. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these. Like my wallet literally won't shut. So. Yeah, let's see that. I want to see that. Yeah, so there is a little bit of USD in here just in case we... Because I think like some case, some things take USD <laughs> and some ridiculous. things don't. Yeah, get it in there. <clears throat> Alright, I've almost got this. And yes! Closed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like George. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well. Now we have to get a taxi into the city to go to our couch surfing destination. And we don't know what currency the taxi wants. <laughs> I have no idea. USD or cut. Don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> Good morning, Myanmar. So we've made it to our couch surfing destination and we've slept. And this is what we're waking up to. That, it, that's ridiculous, right? It's just, it's just ridiculous? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's a winding river that goes by here. And we are on the 16th floor of a residential complex, which is kind of, I think this is one of the biggest buildings in the city. Like nothing is as tall as this building. And it's nice and hazy and beautiful. 
Oh, it's Christmas now. So, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Alright, so we are at our couch surfing destination. And those of you who don't know what couch surfing is, it is basically a website network of people who say, yeah, you can come stay at my house for free. And you kind of just jump in and go to a house and then you start accruing, like people will say like, you're a good person to have stay with them. So we're in good standings with the website and people are like, yeah, come and stay with us. So we're on our third couch surfing adventure um, here in Myanmar. And so far it's turned out really good. Um, it was easy to get to and the people that we're staying with are really cool. Uh, we went out to dinner at a really, I don't know if it was a nice restaurant, but it was a relaxing and really cool restaurant just to sit at the waterfront and enjoy. I think it was, it was a nice restaurant. The food was, I mean, it was just, it was like a Chinese restaurant. It wasn't like, I didn't feel like I got like some like exposed to some incredible Myanmarian food or Burmese food or something, so. I did get exposed to eating but, food. I was so hungry at that point. Yeah, we were quite hungry. It was quite yeah. late when we went, went out and we had been traveling all day on the plane and we hadn't eaten in a long time, so. Yeah, but it was a really good. cool meal, and there's so the people that we're staying with are um, from Spain, and they also have got some um, French couch surfers staying with them as well. Their apartment is like quite large, so there's a lot of rooms for people to stay in. And then we also met up with another couch surfer, and she's from Bel Belgium. 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 So we had a pretty big dinner, and that was Christmas Eve dinner. And it was a really good time, and everything went awesome. Yeah, and we got to stay in a nice bed and relax and sleep and wake up to the sunrise. And now we're going to go out and explore Yangon. And uh, the first thing we needed to do that is we need to get a taxi. But maybe before that, we need to find Parcheesi pieces. So we can play us some Parcheesi. <laughs> So that's what this is, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think other countries call it something different, but in America we call it Parcheesi. Let's find a taxi. <laughs> it's been about two minutes and now we're in a taxi. <laughs> we can. Quite, quite easy. And um, if you notice, like, we are driving on the, like, the car is physically on the right side of the road, but so is the steering wheel. Which is, um, that's not usual. Like, not usually, many countries do that. Yeah, usually the driver is on the left. Or the driver is towards where the traffic meets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in the middle of the lane instead of the far end of the lane. But our taxi yesterday, the driver was on the left, but I've noticed some cars going by. It's kind of a mixed bag. It looks like the brand new cars are drive on the left, like, which is what would make sense in traffic, but the older cars, or slightly older cars, are driving on the right. Does it make sense just because that's what we're used to? Like, is this a better way to drive? I don't think so, because I don't think you can gauge, like, your distance between the oncoming traffic very well. But it would be the same with the edge of the road if you were sitting here. I guess since in this country there's oncoming traffic on both sides of the road, then I guess it just really doesn't make a difference. <laughs> heavily trafficked intersection right now. Lots of people, lots of cars, and a rooster. He's right over there, just straight chilling. He's cockadoodling every now and then. Um, we just went to a little market like like three feet away, and uh, we were looking at the fruit to see what they had to offer. They had like small oranges and apples, and this was probably the strangest thing that was in there that I didn't know what it was. So we got a bushel. This much? 30 cents. Like US cents. US cents. So it was 300 chat. And we talked about chat. We thought it was chat. It's chat. Well, we think it is. Yeah. <laughs> we think it is. Again. Anyways. So this little guy kind of looks like a grape, like a white grape. Uh, feels kind of like an olive. But when you bite it, it's like an apple but it has a big seed in the middle. It's really good. Maybe this is like grapes on steroids. <laughs> or maybe it's just a malnutritioned apple. <laughs> I like to think about things pumping up, not going down. <laughs> it's closed, but that's a hundred yen shop. Like as in, they don't use yens here. Wait, wait. 
they're not gonna take my and take my yens. We have plenty of yen. Do you want to go in there and try to spend yen if we find an open yes, one? Yes, <laughs> yes, some of yes, my wallets. yes. <laughs> All right, so we've reached the city center, which is not bustling, but it's moving. Um, we're in a very large park. Uh, Mahabandola Park Garden. <laughs> that was probably perfect. It was probably perfect. And uh, this huge obelisk, which is one of my favorite words, is here to celebrate independence in Myanmar. And it's gigantic. And behind the obelisk is one of the biggest zedis, which I don't know if you'd call it a shrine or a pagoda or whatever, but it's zedi in Burmese. And you can't really see it through the trees. We're obviously going to get a lot closer to it, but that is their traffic circle. All the cars are going around this to get to different parts of the city, which I think is pretty cool. Like having this gigantic thing be the the center of a traffic stop. So it's dangerous to take photos and stuff. Sounds did, exciting. Didn't they say it was 2,000 years old? <laughs> they did, 2,000 years old, but honestly, no one really knows. So our book says, <laughs> but they say 2,000 years. So that's pretty good. Um, no, thank you. And whoa, whoa, whoa. over here are a lot of government buildings. She was, she was selling postcards. We, we do need postcards. We do actually need postcards. But it's a good yeah. sign because until now I didn't know if they had postcards here or not. Yeah, we need postcards. <laughs> it's been 12 hours. We're a bit homesick, so we've come to Tokyo Donut. <laughs> Here's a happy donut. Here's a happy Katie. Here's a chocolate donut. And here's a green drink. Orchid milk. I know the word orchid, but isn't it a flower? It's a flower. So I'm, I'm gonna try this because it, it's just odd. So let's, let's do this. They had to go out of the building to get this. Like they left the kitchen area. Holy crap. Is it good? It tastes like candy. And then this is strawberry milk. And the total for all of this was 2,200 Burmese kroners. <laughs> $2.20. Yeah, US. USD. Yeah. I don't know if we should talk in USD, yen, chat, I don't know. We can't say kroners because yeah. it's just... <laughs> we can say kroners. Look, it starts with a K. It's a kroner. Okay, now that we've had a few transactions, we are able to see a lot more of the different kinds of money that are here. If we understand correctly, there's no coins here. It's all bills, which is very, very different from Japan. Japan, like, the biggest, the smallest bill is $10. Here, the smallest bill is five cents. So, that's a big difference. We don't have any coins now, and that's weird because Japan is a coin culture. Um, so, I just wanted to show you all the, the monies that we've gotten. This bill is five cents. And what's kind of cool about this is that you can see how they do numbers in their script. script. I was yeah. going to say font. So this is 50 chats. Over here, this is their number for five. So if you want to look for number five somewhere, that's the five. The back's got a lady making a pot. <laughs> And I like that it look it actually says it in English, like yeah. straight up it's in English on the bill. It's quite interesting. Uh, this is the 100. So the number one is a backward C. And this guy's a badass. On the other side, what do we got? A pagoda and some people making stuff. This one is not very exciting. The 200, which is kind of cool. Again, that's like $2. This, yes, this is $2. No, this is 20 cents. Oh, yeah, 20 cents. Yeah, you're right. This is I'm 20 sorry. cents. Um, the J is for the two. I think that's kind of cool. That's what caught my eye and made me start looking at that. Like, what does that mean? Again, badass. Some and elephant action. I like that. Some elephant action. Some rainbow action, too. I like it. Okay, so every single one has the badass. <laughs> okay, so 500, we're at 50 cents now. And back. 
nothing too exciting there, just people working, working. It's not exciting. This is a dollar. We finally reached a dollar. <laughs> Badass. <laughs> that's the government building that's outside. Which one? I think the one that's blue that's by the... Maybe. Obelisk. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out. Yeah, I don't know. Looks interesting, whatever it is. And then we're on to... Oh! No badass. Yeah, that's what we Big sh ass. showed yesterday. Um, yeah, so this is the one that we showed <clears throat> yesterday. And so All far, the, biggest, the biggest bill we have. Yeah, I don't know if it gets any bigger than this. So that's kind of crazy. Five bucks. Five, five dollars is the biggest... That we've seen. Biggest bill. Maybe we'll find something higher than that, I don't know. But as of now, big bill. <laughs> So we looked at the pictures that we took of the building that I thought this was, and it's not this building. So I'm not sure what this building is. Probably a capital city type of building, not a not capital city type of building. <laughs> this is another one of those countries where crossing the road is kind of like, um, it's like a game of Frogger or something. So we're gonna give this a go. Come on, Katie. Just Balls up, step out in front of that bus. I just saw that they didn't balls up, they stopped. Yeah, generally you just wait and see if a local goes and then you follow. Coming from Japan, I don't know, my traffic navigating skills aren't very good. Everybody in Japan drives so like carefully. All right, here we go. No problem. No problem. Piece of cake. Piece of you do have a piece of cake. <laughs> it looks like baklava. We've been warned about spicy food, and I just had some spicy food. It was really good though. Let's get a look at this. It's good, and I'd eat another piece, but then my face would turn red, and I'm just trying to keep collected here. Keep the tears at bay. Um, okay, so we got a chicken curry. They said this was a chili curry. Which, uh, I forgot. Spicy chicken stuff. Spicy chicken stuff. And then this one was a cauliflower like vegetable blend and I'm I'm really into cauliflower. Like it's, it's the best of all the flowers. So that's what I like. And you get rice. We don't know how much this is going to cost yet. I'm a we bit just concerned. came in and we were like I kind of imagine it's probably gonna be at most two dollars two dollars, two dollars, two dollars. <laughs> And then the rice, maybe another dollar. That's my guess. So for the whole meal, my estimation is like maybe seven dollars. I also have a seven up. So maybe eight dollars. Maybe eight dollars. And then they gave us this soup, and I'm not sure if this is ours. All vegetables? I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I'm not interested in any of them. Except for that cucumber, girl. Mm. It was seven thousand, so it's about seven dollars. So I was, I was right-ish. I said eight, but it's pretty close. You were right in the wrong direction, or r wrong in the right direction. I was. It was cheaper than than you estimated. So true. happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is a pretty big like uh, construction site that they've got going here and they are mixing the concrete on site with a shovel. So these two big like bins are full of concrete mix and they have a hose sort of that's going in there to supply some water. And then they're putting it in these buckets and that guy's carrying it over there and then they're making a building out of buckets full of concrete. Which is just, I mean... <laughs> wow. I just made a friend. Yeah, what do you say? He's pleased to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he's gonna get an orange anytime soon. Just steal it! Just steal it! Oh, here she is. She just waved a bunch of numbers at him. I'm interested to see if he knows what <laughs> to pay. So he's trying to get one of these oranges down here. 
change in the bag. Money to the lady. And he's done. Was it easy or hard? She was really nice, a really warm person. Good. Good smile and everything. Said one, 500. All right, so we're back at the Zeddy at Solpaya, the city center. And there's lots of traffic, lots of people, and we've got lots of snacks. Um, as you saw before, Eric got this gigantic orange. I don't know if he's gonna eat it now, but it's really big. Like, I'm not used to this, this size orange This is an anymore. American sized yeah. orange. We're just not used to it. We're used to these Mekons in Japan. We got this awesome dog. Eric's really interested in that dog. We have the most vaginal pastry ever. <laughs> it is literally, like, without saying anything. Uh, <laughs> I stand by my statement from earlier, okay? She uh, called me gross. gross. <laughs> I'm not the and one. I didn't pick this out. You bought this. We've heard that Lassies are very, very good here. So this is a Lassie, so we'll start with this. It's a yogurt drink. It's not what we expect. Really? Yeah. Is it good or bad? When it said curds, it means curds. Like in a bad way? Or Not in are a you just terrible way. Is it just unexpected? We got, but see the problem is we have two. <laughs> I've never had this before. This, yeah. is a, this is a new thing for me. I get, it's, it's curdy so it's kind of salty and when you go into a lassie you think it's going to be sweet. Yeah, it is, it's, it's, it is, there is sweet to it, but it's not like... This might need to save the day. I don't think it's bad, I just don't know, man. How is that? It just looks like a deep fried thing. Is it sweet? The guy said it was sweet. Flaky deep fried and covered in icing. That's pretty much a win. Yep. So I think between the two, we, we got about a snack situation of a seven out of 10 right now. All right, so we just figured out that payphones do exist here, but in a very strange way. There's not like a little payphone box or like an actual payphone. Someone takes a regular house phone, brings it out here, sits in the shade, and lets you call people on their phone for some sort of money. I actually think it's a cell phone that looks like a house phone because it's got a big antenna on it. Interesting. It, and it's not, no cable. There's nothing plugged, it's not plugged into anything. It's just sitting on that table. Yeah. So somebody is making house cell phones that look like house phones. It's genius. <laughs> I want to call somebody on it, but we only know one phone number and they're working right now. And I don't want them to think that I'm like in some trouble or anything. So we're not going to bother with that, but it's still insane. For a little while we were trying to figure out, are they selling phones? Like house <laughs> phones like this? Are people still using this? But no, that's your pay phone. Katie's found some little chairs. Yeah. These are some pretty small chairs. <laughs> Feels like school. So I was really excited about this sugarcane drink. And then they brought out a hammer for the machine. I don't know if this is gonna happen. <laughs> Success! Sugarcane juice is some of the best shit in the world. You can get it in most southeastern Asian countries. And all you have to do is just look for the little bamboo looking poles and the crazy machine that needs a hammer to work. And you're probably going to have one of the best, sweetest beverages of your life. It's definitely better than the Lassie. <laughs> So we've come quite a ways. We've walked about 30 minutes to another pagoda. And I'm not showing you the pagoda because I've had to pee for like the last hour. So I'm going to the bathroom. But what sucks about this is that to come into this pagoda, you have to take your shoes off. So now I'm gonna go and see how the bathroom without any shoes on is. 
And this big bass puddle here is telling me a lot. All right, this is disgusting. That's got a turd in it. Okay. You and mine. And there's a line. Three toilets. Oh. I kind of want to throw up. All right, well, that pretty much sucked. Um, the good note, the only good note was their western toilets. They weren't squatters, so I don't imagine there was urine all over the floor. But it was really, really wet in there. Everywhere, pretty much. And it was like dirty wet, like obviously like people's feet. <sighs> so, yuck. Now that the toilet situation is completed, will actually explain why we're here. Um, we came here just because this is supposed to be a, a less crowded uh, pagoda to visit, and it's it's definitely less crowded. The bathroom sounded crowded. Yeah, the bathroom was crowded. That, that must be the spectacle. But for some reason, this pagoda has a hat. <laughs> yeah, they've put a, like a, it's like a woven bamboo mat on the outside of it. And sometimes they make noise underneath that sounds like poppin' popcorn. Yeah, I don't know what was going on with that. But um, this pagoda was built a very long time ago and it was destroyed. Well, it was built like 2,000 years ago originally. No, that was the other one. I don't know, it's getting confusing. Yeah, it's a, getting it was confusing. old. But what we know about this one is that it was destroyed in World War II and they rebuilt it and it's hollow inside. So you can actually walk through and we've had a glimpse inside before the toilet fiasco. And it looks pretty cool. Hopefully we'll get some video and overlay that over me talking now. <laughs> and um, one thing that I think is really interesting about the shrines in Myanmar is that from what I've read, and I thought I must not be understanding this correctly, a lot of these shrines were built to enshrine Buddha's hair. Like one strand of hair, build a pagoda. <laughs> Could be Buddha's hair. Who knows? And I, I'm not. I thought I was reading this wrong. I thought it was misunderstanding, but I'm not. It, it, it's really his hair. And this one was uh, has was said to have eight strands of hair at one point. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Let's go inside. <laughs> So we're inside. Um, it's really glitzy and glamoury in here. And that, that's about all I know about in here. It's shiny and stuff. Let's go inside, inside the pagoda. Hello. <laughs> he came up and touched my leg. <laughs> I don't I, know why. I had some kid grab my hand in the street and that freaked me out quite a bit. So this is what the inside of a pagoda is like. fans in your pagoda. Check this out, check this out, look. That's like 55 cents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dropping loot. It's got like a maze in here. Oh, this is really cool. This is yeah. amazing. And this is bizarre because most pagodas, I don't think you can go inside, like they're not hollow on the inside the way this one is. So this is quite unique. Wow, it's really neat. I think it's like a giant star shape. Yeah, I guess it is. Because we just keep going in and so in the center of the pagoda they have this little area where you can like see through a little plastic window and it is supposedly the hair of the Buddha is still in this little shrine but if this place was destroyed like by bombs in World War II I'm not sure that's the same hair but who knows you know? <laughs> they need a new one? I think that's just insulting. I don't know. It seems a weird weird reason to build a pagoda because of a hair.
cover it. So today I read in a magazine that uh, me and Marian horoscopes are not done by the year you were born, not done by the particular part of the year you were born, but by the day. Like, not, not like my birthday, June 11th, not by that. By Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. <laughs> or second Wednesday, which <laughs> opens another box of confusion. Yeah, well, I'll explain that in a second. But when you come to shrines, apparently, people will be having their day set up, and they go and worship at their day. And that's their way to kind of pump up their... Their thing. Karma. Their karma. Yeah, I that's guess. what I, don't I was know. looking Good. for. Um, over here is Friday. But I looked up this one and I can't figure out what day it is. So that brings me to explain Double Wednesday. Um, Myanmar runs on an eight day week. And this is confusing to us. I don't really understand it fully. But basically, Wednesday is chopped into two 12 hour days instead of one 24 hour day. And I don't know how that works or if it's actually something that happens. But it has something to do with like when the Buddha was born or something. And oh, interesting. like, yeah, it has something to do with that, but I don't know the particulars. But I was born on Tuesday. Eric was born on Thursday. So neither of us were born on double Wednesday. Yeah, no double Wednesdays. <laughs> so I'm gonna go find my day and uh, maybe give a shout out to the karma. There is a little pond, and the little pond is full of like hundreds of turtles. But to be honest with you, it's kind of hard to see them because of the color of the pond. But they are there. You can see them poke up every once in a while. There's some over here in this corner. Oh yeah, there's a little teeny tiny one. Cute. So we think we're going on this boat for an hour for a dollar. He might be drunk. There's some beers over there. <laughs> a drunk sailor man? That's what I want to be. He got us on the boat. Yeah, that's true. I think he said sit down. So, yeah, he speaks zero English. No, he said 1,000. Yeah, he understood that. And We tried that's... to negotiate like a, only a half an hour. He wanted to take us out for a dollar and 50 cents. cents for an hour. We just want to go for 30 minutes. I don't want to be out here forever. <laughs> so, yeah, so we said like, you know, half an hour. And he said 1,000. But I think he thinks we're still doing it for the whole time. <laughs> I think we bargained him down by accident. I was okay paying a dollar fifty. Have we mentioned that Katie hates birds? We're like surrounded by seagulls right now. And here we go. I can't figure out how this guy is afraid to run the, run a, hours worth of fuel for a dollar and come out profitable. It makes no sense. Wait, what's it? What? Katie climbed up on the front until the point at which the man said stop. <laughs> For reference, this is what we're in. We're in one of those things. So what's gonna happen when the wake from this boat gets to us? Are we far enough away it's not gonna affect us? <laughs> ah, he's adjusting for it. So the river cruise was really, really cool, and we got to see like people with fishing boats and like a bigger ship, and like, I don't know, it was just really, really nice. And I think it was about 35, 40 minutes or something. When we got on, the guy kept saying like 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, we're like, 1,000's a dollar. Like, this doesn't seem like it makes any sense. And like, I made the video on the boat saying, how can he recoup the value of the fuel? It doesn't even make sense, you know? And then when we got off, he was like, uh, it's actually, he's, he was saying 1000 again. I went to give him 2000 just to be like, here's $2, you know? 
But it, what he was really meant was 10,000. I think that he, I don't think he was swindling us. That's not the feeling I got. I think he literally just doesn't know the difference between like one and 10 in English. So whatever. So it was 10,000 kip or chat. Kip, Wrong where country. are you? I was, in, I was in Laos for a moment. 10,000 chat, which really, I mean, that works out to $10. So that's completely fine. It makes way more economical sense, but it was really nice. I want to point out this, this like hurricane of birds that's happening. I had to ride through that. That was <laughs> terrible. So we saw this guy making these little things in like what's like a takoyaki cooker type thing, but it's not an electric one. He's got an actual fire on the bottom side of it. And um, we're not sure what it is, but it looks like an egg, doesn't it? Does but, look like an egg. But he's putting just like a white thing, a white batter into it, and then that comes out somehow. So I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe it's like an egg that he's mi no, because it'd be yellow. I have no idea what's going on. How is it? It's definitely an egg. It's definitely an egg. Weird, man. Weird. It's fucking good. Is it fucking wow. good? Wow. Look at and so it's in this bag, and we got how many? Kind of like a peanut with like a zest, not zesty, but like a seasoning on top. It's not just peanuts, but so it's peanutty. There was five of them, and it was five hundred. So they were ten cents each. Ten cents a piece. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, that's not turbo cheap, but how do you get them out? With your fingers. Uh, it's, oh, it's pretty warm. He gave us more than five. Did he? I think I don't know. Wow, that's banging. That's really good. That's some of the best egg I've had in a long time. All right, so I have searched this entire carnival for Mohinga, and then I finally asked some guy, and he was like, yeah, I serve that. So now we're sitting at this guy's booth, and this lady asked me if I wanted all these ingredients, and I said yes to pretty much all of them. Uh, I'm interested to see which ones are good and which ones are bad. She put this one in, and the girl over there, she laughed pretty hard. So, <laughs> I'm a bit worried about that one, but we're going to give it a try. This has been recommended to us by the guidebook, and I think Anthony Bourdain mentioned it, did he? Yeah. How is it? You went in for two bites, so it wasn't scary. How, how is it? The flavor's not as good as I thought it was going to be. The what? The flavor's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Mainly because I kind of thought we were going to have lime, which is what they said people do with it, but there's no lime here. So I'm curious about that. But how is it? Like, is it. Explain it. What does it taste okay. like? Um, it tastes a bit like pho. Vietnamese yeah. chicken soup. Yeah. Um, with a lot of other things in it. It doesn't actually taste so fishy. Um, it's definitely fish broth. Um, yeah, other than that, it's, it's okay. I wish it was spicier and I wish it was limier. Would you try it again if you saw spices yeah, and limes? Yeah, I, I want to try it again already. Cool. Yeah, so. Food. pagoda that we went inside of earlier and at nighttime I mean it's like it's Christmas but I don't think that matters I think it's just this is the Wednesday party so a party has broke out here and we're gonna check it out and uh, we're gonna go over that Ferris wheel and get a closer look at what's going on come on 
So they've got one of these things, and it doesn't have a motor. Like, it's human powered. Like, you see that guy right there? See how he just went up on the side? He's throwing his body weight to make that thing propel up further. That's pretty crazy. But what's even crazier is that the Ferris wheel, the Ferris wheel is the same thing. So you can see this guy right there climbing in the Ferris wheel. So once they start getting it going, see there's a guy up top up here too? They'll start moving their body weight around so it'll make the whole Ferris wheel spin. And they climb around on it and it's insane looking. All right, so you can see there's a guy right here, there's another guy over here, and there's a kid over here. And they're walking up the, up the scaffolding of the Ferris wheel to make it turn. And this has got to be one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. Like this guy up here is like hanging on the outside. Are you what are you serious? Is this really happening? And they're now climbing up. Like they've loaded a couple of people off and a couple of different people on. And now they're climbing up to the top. And I bet you they're gonna swing their body weight all out at the same time and it's gonna go faster. Again, I'm shocked. See the guy hanging? I would like to point out that these guys are also wearing flip flops. So this is how they make a Ferris wheel go. Look at that guy's upside down. That guy is upside down. <laughs> and here he goes. That is insane. And he, he grabbed it and threw himself back up. This is the world's most extreme Ferris wheel. You want to do it? Yes. We're going to do this shit. <laughs> For 50 cents each. 50 cents each. So, like, you know, if, we, if this is it, I mean, I, I'm sorry, guys, but this is it. So you can see these people up here, there's like four people, four people, four people, two people. <laughs> yeah. We got some people in here. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so check out their, their shoes. They have flip-flops on. And this thing isn't like tiny, like... It's quite large. <laughs> Here we go. Katie, this is terrifying. This is crazy. <laughs> and like, there's nothing over here keeping me in. Like, I don't have anything to hold on to. I'm holding the camera. This is it. These people are kissing because it's the end. <laughs> you have the pagoda in the background and the danger in the foreground. <laughs> I'm terrified. I don't do these things well. <laughs> and we're kind of at the top now. So I think they've now loaded the whole thing. It took like five minutes. Which, I mean, obviously. And now they're climbing up to the top. And I'm about to wet myself. Feel it in the 
the stomach. It's terrible. <laughs> my my elbow hit a tree. I'm sorry about the camera work here. I don't really have any. Yeah, my elbow hits a tree every time we go around. Yeah. Don't touch the tree. It was great. I do it again. Oh my god. When you hit the top of that peak, it's like. Yeah. It just throws your stomach up. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> On like a um, that a trickshaw thing I think they call it a trickshaw it's a bicycle rickshaw and I'm not sure if you can see me at all but there's a man pedaling and Katie is leaning against me I will give you an overhead view I wonder if that looks like anything at all can you see Katie there we go <laughs> I'd like to expand a little bit and say I'm facing the wrong direction <laughs> here comes the traffic Hello. So this city is quite dark at night. There's not a whole lot of street lights or anything, even though it's got a fairly significant population. There's like four million people that live here. But um, they're still like working on the electrical infrastructure. I wonder if you can see me at all in this shot. But so you go through these areas where it's super, super dark and it's, it's it would feel sketchy, but for some reason the people here just don't feel like sketchy people. So it really isn't that like intimidating or anything. But um, let's see, what did we just find? I see a guy, there's a Santa Claus. All right, so it's all come full circle. Just as we were in the city center in the morning and in the afternoon, we're back here at nighttime. Uh, I'd heard that this area looks really nice at nighttime and it definitely does. Um, so I don't know how to pronounce anything. So <laughs> Solpaya, the Zeti, is completely lit up and just looks like Epic gold. It's a traffic circle too. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so out of we're place. Just driving around it, like that. That's that's how they drive. And over here, the obelisk is kind of lighting up and not lighting, and then lighting up and then not lighting. It's not changing colors. It's just. I think it is changing colors. Yeah. But it's it's, it's like blue and then yellow and then white and that's it. It's cool. Well, the, the church is really just banging it out. Here. Yeah, and then we have a, a church with Christmas lights, which is appropriate because. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Should I go pee on the turd? I don't know. I have to go. 